The sun sets over southern China, and the final embers of the Yellow Turban Rebellion prepare to make their final stand. So welcome to the first of the multiplayer battles I want to do for Three Kingdoms Total War. And hopefully these are well received, because I have to say I had quite a lot of fun playing a series of battles on multiplayer for Three Kingdoms, and I would certainly like to do a few more. And yeah, so this is going to be between me and a couple of the other people that you may have seen in a few of the battles from Third Age Reforged as well, because Mechgrim and Master Blaster are both here playing alongside me, and that is going to be a hard AI making up the numbers, because there were only three of us available uh, for this battle. But in the future, hopefully we will be able to do a few more large-scale battles. I do know that a large-scale siege was talked about, in addition to another siege, which is going to be upcoming on the channel as well. Uh, so, as the, was said at the start of the battle, the scenario here is that the final vestiges of the Yellow Turbans are going to be going up against the combined forces of the Kingdom of Wu, led by Sun Jian and his children, and the Kingdom of Shu Han, led by Liu Bei and his sworn brothers. Uh, and I, and a hard AI, am going to be playing as one of the two Yellow Turban factions. So, the hard AI is not bad in this game, honestly. Like, it does actually react a little bit better than it has in the past, but obviously it's still no substitute for having a real player, so it's still going to be a bit of a struggle for me to win this, but uh, yeah, the Yellow Turban Army is an interesting one, to say the least. They do actually have some pretty decent units. Where they do fall down a little bit is in their higher tier units. In particular, they don't have a lot of high tier cavalry, like as soon as you come up against that unit of high tier cavalry, like Jade Dragons or Heavy Xiliang Cavalry or something like that, you're really going to start to struggle. Um, but nonetheless, the Yellow Turbans do actually have a decent mid-tier, more than anything else. And also, they've got a lot of numbers. They struggle a little bit with morale, but one area they can make up for this in is their generals, actually. Their generals do have a bit of a duality about them. They're a little bit more complicated to walk through than the other generals from the other factions, because, of course, for other generals, you can say, ah, yes, the champions, they're good in sustained melee against a single target. Vanguards, they're good at smashing units to pieces. Sentinels, they're good at tying down units or heroes. And that sort of thing. Whereas, the Yellow Turban Generals are a little bit different. For example, Pei Wan Xiao here is a veteran, which means he is actually good in melee against other units, mostly. You can see he's not actually looking too happy about the situation, but he does have a very large mace, uh, which hopefully he's going to be able to use to good effect. My commander here is He Yi. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. I'm, not, I'm sure it's not He Yi. Uh, but he is a healer. Now, a healer is perhaps most closely related to the commander type heroes from the other the other factions. They tend to buff nearby units. They can also heal, but actually Hur Yi is unable to do that in spite of his uh, in spite of his name. So you can see that he does actually have one with the people, which means he does buff their morale, he buffs their melee evasion, he also has two active abilities which both buff and debuff the enemy in addition to doing a bit of damage. Uh, so he is my commander here, he is going to be leading the final stand of the Yellow Turban Rebellion. As we just mentioned as well, we got Pei Wan Xiao over here, who is a veteran. A little bit more focused around being in melee with other units. They can be in melee with other heroes as well, um, but they aren't quite as good at that. Uh, Pei Wan Xiao is also the hero which I saved a little bit more money on. Both of the other heroes are maximum level. Of course, in multiplayer, you can choose one of three levels that your heroes can be at. Either base level, which is very weak, all good things considered, mid-level, and then high level. So Pei Wan Xiao is at mid-level. He does have Wisdom of the River, which is usually a strategist buff, so the fact that he's able to do this... You know, strategists don't tend to like being near enough to use this ability, because they can be burnt down really very, very quickly. Uh, but Pei Wan Xiao is made of sterner stuff than a strategist, so he is going to be able to use that a little bit more freely. And then my final general is going to be Her Man, or He Man, the legend himself over here in the trees, with the Yellow Turban Cavalry Force, such as it is. So he is a scholar, which is essentially the Yellow Turban Duelists, and they get by on this by having a huge melee evasion. You know, they're able to evade attacks very, very easily. He also has a bow as well, so he's one of those heroes which can pull out a bow at range. Um, very, very good hero, actually, here, man. I think, uh, overall, he's probably my favourite Yellow Turban hero, not just because he's got the best name, but he is also very, very effective in combat, as well as having a ranged attack as well which is very, very nice. So I'm going to be using him to try and flank around. He did have Vanguard deployment, but I didn't deploy up near the enemy because I kind of expected there would be a little bit of trickery like this, and you can see there is enemy cavalry just in behind. Uh, before we move on, though, I think we will actually just go through the other Yellow Turban General, starting off with Huang Shao. So my AI companion uh, is going to be using his Scholar. That He's going to be charging his generals right up the pipe, which is a little bit risky, perhaps. Wong Xiao, unlike her man, does actually have no ranged attack, but I think he is actually slightly better in melee. He's got a few more useful abilities as well, so he's probably the best yellow turban duelist overall. 
Uh, over here as well, we also have Zhang Kai, who is a veteran. Uh, all of my AI's generals have been fully upgraded as well, unlike uh, Pei Wan Zhao, who had to make do with just a single upgrade. Uh, so Zhang Kai, again, very useful in melee against other units. Can also hold his own against heroes as well. And then the enemy commander is going to be Gong Du, you can see there, with, again, a very large, oversized mace. Uh, and actually, this is the sort of map where Gong Du should be pretty at home, because when they're in, when Gong Du is fighting in trees, he's got some active abilities to make himself and nearby units a little bit stronger. Uh, so we might not be able to win through outright force of arms here. Again, the Yellow Turbans are a little bit more lacking at the higher end than the more established kingdoms of the Han Empire. Um, but we, we should be able to make something happen if we can use a little bit of trickery here, if the AI is clever enough to do so. Uh, but having a look through our units, one area in particular where the Yellow Turbans are lacking in comparison to the, uh, the factions of the former Han Empire is their cavalry. The cavalry is very limited, you know, again, a unit of very heavy cavalry is something which the Yellow Turbans can struggle to deal with outside of using their pole arms. Uh, but I do have these White Wave Horsemen, uh, which are essentially the best shot cavalry that I can muster. They're not fantastic, but they should still be able to do a decent job off the charge, medium spear cavalry. They do have a shield as well, which is quite nice. Even some of the heaviest cavalry actually foregoes a shield, especially the spear cavalry. Uh, although, um, yeah, here they are. The White Wave Horsemen with their, their shields and spears. Uh, and it is also worth saying as well that we do have some Yellow Turban Horsemen, which are just melee cavalry. Melee cavalry have got a higher attack rate, a little bit more focused around dealing with sort of fleeing lighter troops and infantry and archers, um, but also they can be used to bulk out your cavalry force as well, and of course they are going to be led by Hiraman. Uh, we'll go through the red team in just a moment. And then we have my infantry line, so having a look over here, we do have a couple of units of reclaimers, which are more heavily armoured spearmen, sort of the analogous to the spear guard from the more established kingdoms of the Han Empire. Uh, pretty good though, the, the shields of course, archers are very strong in this game, so having a very heavily shielded and decently armoured unit like this is going to be good to try and resist that a little bit, and of course they can help should the enemy cavalry prove too much on the horseback engagements. With that in mind as well, I did also go for four units of the Bringers of Righteousness. They are medium glaive and bow infantry, uh, so a very, very good hybrid unit. I've always been a fan in Total War games of units of archers which are capable of looking after themselves in melee, especially in multiplayer. Because uh, often in multiplayer you'll find players that are you know, savvy enough to go straight for your archers with a unit of deadly cavalry. Not the sort of thing you're going to want to do carelessly against the Bringers of Righteousness, however. Their Glaives means they do have a good bonus against mounted units, and of course they are good at range as well with a decent amount of armour. Uh, but again, the equivalent unit from the other kingdoms, the Azur Dragons, are better. They are more heavily armoured, more survivable. Uh, but the Yellow Turban variant is cheaper, so I'm able to bring four of them quite comfortably without eating into my budget too much, which is the, the real selling point of the Yellow Turbans. It's very easy to have a decent army as well as having fully upgraded heroes, whereas you have to make sacrifices when you're playing as the established kingdoms. Uh, then over here we have some Watchmen of the Peace, a couple of units of medium crossbow infantry. So this is the closest thing I've seen in the game to Pavis crossbowmen. They have a decent shield on their back, as well as obviously having those crossbows. Crossbows have less ammunition than archers, of course, uh, but are able to do much more armor-piercing damage and just more damage in general. A lot of stopping power on crossbows. Not quite to the same level as Reforged, you know, archers are able to keep pace with crossbows a little bit better, but even so, crossbows are still a worthwhile addition to bring to your army, so I've got six units of ranged in total, all of which can look after themselves in melee decently well. And then finally, I have got four units of yellow turban warriors, which are basically just saber militia only. A little bit better, actually, than saber militia, I think. Um, and that's one thing that the yellow turbans do have, especially if you're going to play a game as the yellow turbans in the early game. Uh, you're able to do pretty well in the early game with your units. You know, it's it's only later on when you start coming up against the really high tier stuff that the Yellow Turbans can struggle to keep pace. Uh, but yeah, the, the Yellow Turban Warriors, there are four of them, but they're nothing special, certainly. And against especially the enemy heroes, the enemy vanguards, uh, we're going to be in a decent amount of trouble. They're just here to help hold the line, and hopefully my archers and heroes can do most of the heavy lifting. Meanwhile, my allies have brought, again, some Yellow Turban Horsemen, three units of them. And I did actually pick this army for them, so I was trying to go for something a little bit more balanced. They too have got some reclaimers, again a very useful unit to have. As we fight our way through the trees, we can see they've also got some chanters. The chanters inspire nearby units. They're not particularly great. They do actually have a little bit more armor-piercing damage because of their sacred chants. Um, and obviously they're using their clubs, and anyone who's played Dark Souls knows that a wooden stick can be surprisingly effective. Uh, but even so, they're very lightly armored, of course, and... They're going to need that encouragement from this unit, I think, my allies, to remain in the fight for any length of time, otherwise there could be a decent amount of breaking going on. 
We also have the Guardians of the Land, which are actually Gong Du's unique unit. They're a unit of heavy G infantry, or heavy halberd infantry, so good armour. Um, obviously, very much an all-purpose unit. The G units in general are pretty good to use all round. They can engage with infantry, they can engage with cavalry. Very much the Swiss Army knife of this game, it must be said. And this is the best one that the Yellow Turbans have available to them. Again, the Han Empire Kingdoms do have better options than the Yellow Turbans, but they're also very expensive, and if you bring them, you're going to need to cut, corner cut corners elsewhere, which is, of course, something we don't need to worry about. More Watchmen of the Peace, the Heavy Crossbow Infantry, as well as some Men of the Forest, which are, of course, in the forest, so they are Light Bow Infantry. Very good for skirmishing. You know, again, their wooden armour is not going to save them too much against the heavier archers that the enemy may have brought. But they can also mix in melee as well, pulling out a little hand axe. Uh, we'll see how they do. We'll see if the uh, the AI is able to use that to good effect. Now, moving on to my opponents today. And we have, first of all, the Kingdom of Shuhan, commanded by Master Blaster. And we'll go through his generals first of all, of course. The three brothers, Liu Bei, the commander. Commander's, of course, fantastic for buffing up nearby troops. Liu Bei is no different, of course. And Liu Bei, in particular, is very good for encouraging nearby troops. He's not the best in sustained melee, it must be said. Um, but he's not the worst. I mean, you could stand to do worse than Liu Bei. I mean, especially when he's backed up by his two Swarm Brothers, who generally do the heavy lifting when it comes to combat. Zhang Fei as a vanguard is really, really strong. He's able to dish out a lot of damage to enemy units. And Zhang Fei is honestly probably the hero I was concerned about most of all going into this battle, because he has an ability that is able to reduce morale extremely. But yeah, Blazing Rule here, minus 100 morale. It's a real problem for Yellow Turban units. Their morale is not great at the best of times, but Zhang Fei can essentially send them routing immediately. Uh, they will, of course, come back, especially if they're in decent health, but it's still going to be a problem keeping my line organized when Zhang Fei is running into them. And then, of course, we have Guan Yu, the God of War. And the God of War ability is extremely potent as well. Although God of War is most likely to miss against the Scholars, so we'll see. I mean, you know, a top red hair and with his Green Dragon Crescent Blade, uh, Guan Yu is going to be a very tough opponent, but the Scholars may be able to take him on. We'll see. And then the army of Shu Han. You see here, he has, he's actually got quite a lot of peasant band with their glaives here, so clearly Shu Han have invested most of their money into individual units and their heroes. A lot of their army is actually relatively low tier, to the point where even my yellow turban units should be fairly comfortable against them. Uh, peasant band over here, yeah, just more spearmen. Having a look over here, it looks like he's got some G infantrymen as well, although, once again, it is just G militia, so again, very low tier infantry units. Uh, mostly pole arms though, so they're going to be able to resist against cavalry, but cavalry is not really the stock of the yellow turban, so my infantry should be fairly comfortable to deal with them. He's also got a lot of archer militia, so yeah, Shuhan. Definitely cutting some corners, but going for some elite units elsewhere. And you can see that this is one area they've invested a lot of money in. The Protectors of Heaven. Probably the best heavy glaive infantry in the game. Extremely heavily armoured, very tough to wear down. And this is the kind of unit the Yellow Turbans have no match for. You know, at the very high end, the old kingdoms of the Han Empire are going to be able to field this kind of unit where the Yellow Turbans have nothing. Uh, so a couple of units of them. And then just in behind, I believe, yes indeed, we do have the Azure Dragons, so as I was saying, the Bringers of Righteousness, good, uh, but the Azure Dragons have got better armour, and they are just a better unit all around, but again, they are more expensive, and also Master Blaster has only been able to bring two of them in this particular fight. Meanwhile, heading back down here, I think that's it. Nope, this is a unit of Sabre Cavalry, I think, no, this is actually from the Kingdom of Wu. Uh, so having a little look back down over here, you can see just in behind my cavalry that I have deployed, there are a few units of Shuhan cavalry as well, some lance cavalry, uh, which are one step above the militia. They're sort of the basic cavalrymen. They've got some armor. Um, all around, they're not half bad units, uh, but the real problem I'm going to have back here is the fact that the Jade Dragons are here. Now, the Jade Dragons are the best unit of heavy cavalry that every Han Empire faction has got available to them. Uh, there are a few unique units which can contest that as well, like the heavy Xilian cavalry and the heavy Tiger and Leopard cavalry, but the Jade Dragons are something which everyone has available to them, uh, and definitely the best unit of cavalry that Shu Han can bring. Uh, but they are outnumbered here, and also there are no heroes helping them out here. It's not like Zhang Fei is also deployed right behind my lines. Uh, so her man might be able to come back and, uh, and help out to deal with this unit of Jade Dragons. There's also another unit of Lance cavalry here. So, now we shall move on to the Kingdom of Wu, commanded by Mech Grimm this evening this well this evening uh, it was the evening when we played this and they are going to be commanded by Sun Jian who is a very very strong lord in combat it must be said sentinels 
are very, very tanky indeed, and Sun Jian is no different. Indeed, Sun Jian is actually probably my favourite Sentinel overall. I think Zhao Yun and Zhang Liao are both actually stronger than Sun Jian. Uh, but neither of them have got the offensive abilities that Sun Jian has. So Sun Jian is a little bit more multi-purpose, and obviously very, very tanky. He's going to be able to help hold down the front line, and it looks as though Matt Grimm has also invested a little bit more in his infantry. He's also gone for a unit of Sabre Cavalry just on the flank here again. A little bit more heavily armoured than the Militia variants. Uh, you can see over here he has gone for some Pearl Dragons, actually. The Pearl Dragons are all about that melee evasion, very much similar to the philosophy of the Scholars for the Yellow Turbans use. Uh, they don't have a lot of armour, uh, but it's very hard to hit them in melee, and they're able to do quite a lot of damage. They also have actually a ranged block chance, although even so, when those arrows do land, the lack of armour is going to be a real problem for the Pearl Dragons. I remember using them uh, in my campaign, and while they do have a ranged block chance, there is still uh, a little bit of a weakness there if you can saturate them with arrow fire enough, a couple of units of them. He's also gone for another unit which I had quite a lot of fun using in the campaign, the Mercenary Infantry. Very few factions actually have a mid-tier axe unit like the Mercenary Infantry, so it's a real boon for the Kingdom of Wu that they're able to use this. Uh, decent armour, good damage as well, obviously, you know, outside, there are really only, you have the axe band, which are a militia tier axemen, or the yellow dragons, which are an incredibly expensive axemen. Uh, very few factions have the mid-tier option that the Kingdom of Wu have in the Mercenary Axes. And then over here... We have some Sabre Militia, obviously the Sabre Militia uh, very much making up the numbers here on the flank. And another unit of Sabre Cavalry just in behind. We also have the Archer Force made up almost entirely again of Archer Militia. So it must be said that in terms of Archers, we probably hold the advantage here, myself and my AI companion. Uh, we have Sun Chuan back here as well, a commander just like Liu Bei. Once again, he's going to be here to buff up the enemy. Oh, well, buff up the enemy Archer line and infantry line in particular and support his father. Uh, but once again, we do have bit of an ambush going on. Swen Ren, the, uh, the rising sun, is going to be behind here. The Heart Seeker ability is so devastating on enemy generals. She is a vanguard as well, so she's pretty good at smashing through enemy infantry lines, and she does have an ambush force with her. Again, it's mostly Sabre and Archer Militia, though. She doesn't really have any cavalry. Well, she does have a couple, a bit of cavalry with her. Tell a lie. She has a unit of Jade Dragons, which is a very significant unit of cavalry. Uh, I think, yeah, two units of Jade Dragons, in fact, and infantry, so it's a significant ambush force here which is going to be careening right into the flank of my AI companion. So quite a lot to go over there. Um, but again, it is a completely new game, so a completely different set of rules that we're going to be working under. Um, but without further ado, let's begin. And you can see that my AI companions are immediately going to start charging right up the pipe, um, which is going to force my hand somewhat as well. So we're going to have to start charging forward. Uh, but you can also see that immediately we're going to see an engagement as we force our way through the trees and leaves. Uh, but I think the enemy were hoping to catch me off guard, but I am not going to allow them to do that. Hiraman is also going to be utilising his buffs on his cavalrymen, and while the Yellow Turban Cavalry is no match for even Lance Cavalry or the Jade Dragons in particular, the outright numbers advantage we have here, as well as the fact that we have one of our generals here, is going to cause a real problem for the Shuhan Cavalry, and even the mighty Jade Dragons are going to be laid low if they stay in melee for too long. You can also see, however, uh, that one of the units of enemy cavalry did actually avoid this engagement, although I do have one of my yellow turban horsemen chasing them down to uh, to try and stop them. I also have Pei Wan Shao moving back here to guard my back lines, uh, while He Yi is going to be moving forward with my main army. But my AI companion here, seeing perhaps a little bit of an opportunity to try and go after the Shuhan archers, is going to be charging up their yellow turban horsemen to try and go after their archers, but the real problem they're going to have is the fact that there are some peasant band right in behind with the uh, with the anti-cavalry bonus, but Liu Bei is right over here, getting right in and amongst it with his two small brothers, and that is going to be enough to cause the Yellow Turban Horsemen to become shaken. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei sending them packing very, very quickly indeed. Uh, the Yellow Turban Heroes, however, from my ally, going to be charging right in as well. Absolute madness. Again, a couple of well, a scholar and a couple of veterans, so they are probably the better choice for charging into just pure melee. Uh, but they are very isolated from their army here. Yeah, and they can see that the AI didn't realise that there was obviously going to be an ambush here, and now a duel of heroes. We're actually going to go into slow motion, I think. So Zhang Fei, Liu Bei, and Guan Yu are all over here against Zhang Kai, Gongdu, and Huang Shao. Fairly evenly matched fight, all things considered, to be honest. 
Uh, but the real kicker here is the fact that they're engaging so close to the Shu Han infantry line. Uh, so it'll be very, very easy for Shu to support their generals, uh, which is obviously going to be a real problem for the Yellow Turbans as they move forwards. Uh, but the enemy cavalry did break very quickly, so Herman very much victorious. And I'm going to try and push my cavalry around the flank as quickly as possible because obviously with my AI Banzai charging forwards, uh, I'm going to have to try and make this count as quickly as I possibly can. I'm going to have to try and lay siege to the Shu front line. Uh, meanwhile, we do have a bit of an engagement going on in the trees down here again. In the trees is where the yellow turbans want to be traditionally. Uh, they do have a few more buffs in there than the kingdoms of the Han Empire usually get. Uh, but the Lance Cavalry are engaged with the Yellow Turban Horsemen. This is a fight the Lance Cavalry should honestly win. Uh, but I do think I've got Pei One Shao on the way over here as well. Indeed I do. Uh, which should be enough to tilt this fight again in my favour. I'm actually unaware of the fact for the moment that Swen Ren also has an ambush force over here. But the real problem that my AI companion is having at the moment. The Watchmen of the Peace are right here. One of the most important units in our army. Uh, and they're shooting point blank into the jade dragons as they move forward but the jade dragons able to shrug off even crossbowmen you can see that man there is falling away uh, but it's not going to be enough to kill off the whole unit and the jade dragons have got an absolutely brutal charge they're not the fastest cavalry because of their heavy armor generally speaking the more heavily armored a unit is the slower they are but you can see so many units going flying as the sheer mass of the jade dragons collides with the watchman of the peace and there are some chanters in behind which will be doing their best to make sure that the watchman of the peace don't rout at least but Charging in and out here is not going to be the hardest task. The AI have left themselves brutally open to the ambush from Swen Ren, uh, which is, of course, the uh, the downside to uh, not being a player of flesh and blood. The AI may be better in this game when you put them on the higher difficulties, but um, still no substitute, substitute for a real player, it must be said. The Guardians of the Land also taking point, which, again, is a bit of a mistake because it's just leaving them wide open to flanking fire from the Kingdom of Wu, Sun Jian and Sun Chuan watching on as their units engage. You can see the Yellow Turbans now being forced to turn around and engage in melee. You can see over here ooh, Zhang Fei deploying his blazing roar, lowering the morale by 100. Although it must be said, the Yellow Turban generals, yeah, you can see they are now thinking of routing. They might be able to stabilize, but when they're under arrow fire like this, I'm not too sure. Liu Bei, though. <laughs> Liu Bei talking about his wife, who is actually Swen Ren, so law friendly as it were. But yeah, the Yellow Turban Generals are actually much more resolute in melee than most of their units, but even then, being so close to the enemy archers, being so close to a forest which is burning down, and listening to Zhang Fei's deafening roar was too much for them, and you can see over here as well, there is a real problem as the Yellow Turbans think of routing Yellow Turban Spearmen, a very basic unit having to go up against Pearl Dragons. Very much a mismatch there. Yellow Turban Spearmen, basically militia spears. Sun Jian is also helping out the Pearl Dragons over here, which the Guardians of the Land are a little bit more resolute, but they're still outmatched in this situation pretty horribly. The Yellow Turban Generals have returned, but they're still just charging in. I'm trying to charge my men in as quickly as I possibly can as well, so as we go into slow motion once again, we can see that the Reclaimers are on the front line as well as my Yellow Turban Warriors colliding with just a basic peasant band of Shu Han. And this is where we could be able to bring back the fight a little bit more. Uh, because the Shu Han infantry they've deployed is pretty limited. They only have a couple of, well, I say that, only a couple of units of Protectors of Heaven. But that's where pretty much all of their strength lies. And through sheer weight of numbers and the rest of our unit's quality, we should be able to make something happen. But also there is the problem of the Sworn Brothers as well. Meanwhile, Swen Ran is getting ready to deploy her ambush, but Pei Wan Shao is still back here in the back lines, trying to deal with what was left of the Shu Han cavalry, the Jade Dragons, and what was left of the Lance cavalry. Actually, my ally did come down here to help, which was amazing, really. Uh, but we're dealing with what's left of the Shu Han ambush, but the real problem is we won't have much left then to deal with what the Wu ambush has in store for us, especially with Swen Ran. Uh, she is going to be able to use her, her Heart Seeker to brutal effect on Pei Wan Shao unless I'm able to get him out of there. But if I do get him out of there, the Jade Dragons will rip us to pieces. So it's a bit of a catch-22 here. You can see the three brothers hunting in a pack here, going after Gong Du. Real problem for him there. Ooh, bit of a jump there. Here we can see the trees being set alight by all of my bringers of righteousness, trying to really lay into the Shu Han army, which honestly, with the morale debuff and the fatigue debuff that the flaming trees will give us, uh, should be enough to uh, to really put some real pressure 
on shoe, as we can see here, the Pazzam Band having to engage with the Yellow Turban Warriors, and the Yellow Turban Warriors have a significant quality advantage for once, as the you can see that the Peasants, usually the stock of the Yellow Turbans, really, doing very well. You can see over here that Hurama able to expose the back lines of Shuhan and the Archer Militia. Flaming shot, minus four morale. Gongdu trying to insult Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and Liu Bei. Maybe not the best idea when they're three on one in him. Herman, however, we are starting to crush through the Shu backlines. Some duels are underway. Three duels, all in all, actually. Uh, but this one over here between Zhang Kai and Guan Yu is almost certainly going to go the way of Guan Yu. You can see there, I think he was just deploying his God of War ability. Um, but I think it missed, actually, interestingly enough. But even so, a veteran... If this was a scholar, Guan Yu might be in a little bit of trouble. But um, it's not, so he should be just fine, you would think. Uh, and Zhang Kai, while he is a pretty resolute foe, he is certainly not the God of War. Uh, another fight which is certainly going to go in favour of our enemy today is going to be the Tiger of Jiangdong, Sun Jiang, going up against Gong Du. Gong Du was already pretty wounded after being harangued by the three brothers. Uh, and Sun Jiang is also a very accomplished duelist. Sentinels are very good in duels just because they tend to outlast the opponent, much like the Yellow Turban Scholars. Uh, and again, the veterans are not really uh, designed for this kind of duel. Gongdu does have that big hammer, which is good for armor-piercing damage, but Sun Jian here with Tenacity of Steel already at its fullest extent, he is going to be fighting at his strongest. The Tiger of Xiangdong showing his claws there. One duel, however, which is probably going to go in favor of the Yellow Turbans here is Huang Shao, who is the best Yellow Turban duelist overall and could probably throw his hat into the ring for being one of the best duelists in the game. Going up against Sun Chuan, who is only a commander, uh, Sun Chuan will be able to buff himself up a little bit and survive for a decent amount of time, but he's certainly not going to win this duel, you would expect, unless the AI is just really bad at using their abilities, in which case Sun Chuan might be able to hold on or maybe run away. But you can see here that Huang Shao was already kind of wounded, Sun Chuan was at full health, he's already starting to fall away pretty damn quickly. Meanwhile, Sun Ren's ambush has triggered as we push our way through the trees once again. Uh, Pei Wan Shao, as well as a few units of Yellow Turban Chanters are still in the trees here, uh, as well as some Yellow Turban Horsemen, which are thinking of routing. They're already wavering under the weight of Sun Ren's assault. Combined infantry and cavalry assault, and of course, Sun Ren also has that bow she can use, much like her man. Uh, she can use ranged attacks, softening the enemy up before moving in for the kill herself. In particular, the Heartseeker is so good at dealing with enemy generals. Assassination tactics here. Uh, one thing which is going in our favour, however, albeit uh, this was a pretty gung-ho charge of me. What was left of my Yellow Turban Horsemen accidentally charged into the Azure Dragons, which they're going to be repelled pretty quickly. Uh, but exposing the back lines has meant that there is a bit of an overload on the cards here. So a combination of my archers and my infantry is going to be able to slowly but surely wear down, especially with Hirihi over here provi providing his buffs to his Yellow Turban followers. And you can see here the G Militia. It's going to be absolutely no match for a combination of Reclaimers and a General. Uh, they are steady for the time being, but that won't last. Um, so Our men are starting to flee the battlefield, and that is, of course, the Cavalry. Uh, so yeah, it's having a look, a high-level look at the battlefield here. Herman and his Cavalry have done their best, but their push has kind of come to its end, really, with a combination of the Azur Dragons and the Protectors of Heaven. It's going to be very difficult for my cavalry to make it much further, um, but they have given us a chance to try and push up the hill, and they've also given my chance for an arc, well, the chance for my archers to reposition and start thinking about firing on the advancing Wu army. Meanwhile, you can actually see over here that Guan Yu is starting to struggle against Zhang Kai. Missing that God of War ability, as I said in a past video, if Guan Yu misses that God of War ability, it can be pretty difficult for him to actually really lay down a lot of effectiveness in a duel. Yeah. Guan Yu running away from Zhang Kai in a battle, the mighty God of War, laid low by Zhang Kai and having to fall back on his sworn brothers. No honor at all. Uh, but Sun Jian, however, is having a much better time. Although I say that, he did just take a big hit from Gong Du. Yeah, Sun Jian here is actually taking quite a lot of damage here. Gong Du is not completely defenseless in a duel, but this is still... Yeah, Sun Jian 
has emerged victorious, able to defeat Gongdu, but he is very wounded at this point. So victory did not come without a cost, and Sun Chuan here also may have to think about running away from a duel. It's much more in his style of things to run away from a duel, uh, because Huang Shao is going to continue to rip him apart if he doesn't, and if the enemy lose their leadership, it could end up being pretty ugly for them. Zhang Kai was trying to retreat back to the support of his allies, but uh, unfortunately he just finds himself in a bunch of pearl dragons, which is not great for him. Meanwhile, Sun Ren's ambush continues to go as it will. Pei Wan Shao, actually, still holding the line, uh, although Sun Ren is carving her way through all of his support. Uh, and Pei Wan Shao, of course, was the general I invested a little bit less in, so Sun Ren should be able to defeat him in open combat. Vanguards, of course, can be pretty, uh, pretty strong over here, though. One of the enemy general falls. Uh, and that is Sun Chuan, so Huang Shao able to kill him off, but he is also going to immediately die uh, because the three brothers, once again, no honor from them in this battle. They've just been going around systematically trying to assassinate people and running away from duels. Very out of character indeed. Uh, but you can see over here, I have actually managed to surround the elite units from the Kingdom of Shu Han, the Protectors of Heaven, and the Azure Dragons. So getting a full surround on them, trying to do what I can with Hiri Yi and the Reclaimers. Still going to be a tough fight, however. Trying to do our best, however. Bringers of Righteousness using their fire arrows. So trying to avenge Huang Shao after the treachery of the three brothers. Her man charges in here. Again, with his cavalry support. Uh, and he's a scholar, so he's pretty damn good in melee, honestly. But three on one, he would still lose. But he does have the support of his cavalry, of course. Which I think actually just routed. They're wavering at the very least. Uh, but the three brothers looking like they're thinking of running away as well. Not exactly covering themselves in glory here, whereas the Swen family uh, most certainly standing and fighting to the bitter end there. You can see Swen Ran has now turned their attention. Turned her attention, I should say, on Pei Wan Shao and immediately starts tearing him to pieces. <laughs> Oof. You know, Zhang Kai is running from the field, but you can also see that Liu Bei... Uh, died off very, very quickly there, but then the two brothers enraged, forcing Hiraman to then retreat as well. There are some yellow turban horsemen, however, a white wave horsemen, I should say, and now they're going to be supported by some reclaimers. I'm very eager here to try and kill off the Shu Han generals, but they aren't mounted here, the Shu generals, so the spearmen maybe are not going to be the best choice to try and kill them off. And indeed, they're already thinking of wavering and routing. Not great from them. Hopefully Hero Man comes back so that we can come back and try and assassinate another one of the Shu Han generals. Uh, because you can see here that I have actually managed to completely eviscerate, really, most of the Shu Han infantry. The Protectors of Heaven are here, taking point-blank fire arrow fire from my Bringers of Righteousness. The Reclaimers are also here, but they're also routing. <coughs> the Archer Militia coming over. Sun Jian actually getting stuck in. And trying to bail out the Shu Han infantry. Pei Wan Shao saying that his army is routing before him. Swen Ren continues to just tear into pieces. Hiri Yi, however, having a pretty good time of it. Most of his infantry is still actually intact, and he is actually dealing a lot of damage to the Azure Dragons and the Protectors of Heaven, alongside his Reclaimers and his Yellow Turban Warriors. So it's not all. Well, all is not lost just yet, um, but it's looking pretty rough. I mean. Her man is now coming back, but Sun Ren has already forced Pei Wan Shao. He did route, but he did actually come back. Whether he's actually going to be able to do anything remains to be seen. The Bringers of Righteousness are now in melee as well. Obviously, they are good in melee, um, which I will need them to be, because at this point, they're one of the few units that we're going to have to rely on to form a front line. And unfortunately, we did manage to get a surround off on those units, but we weren't able to finish them off quickly enough. And that is the problem with a lot of these yellow turban units that I brought. Not a lot of damage dealers up here. And the Azure Dragons were able to hold on long enough for reinforcements to arrive. The Protectors of Heaven. Also, you can see here, Swen Ren. I think she just used the Heart Seeker on Hiri Yi. Because he was at pretty decent health. Uh, before uh, losing a whole chunk of it. He did win the first bout of his duel, though. I think he sees that he might be able to salvage some honor for the Yellow Turban cause before it is finally snuffed out for good as he engages Swen Ren in a duel. The Rising Sun, who's, you know, she's obviously been very effective in this fight so far. Flames of the Phoenix, you can see Hiri Yi is really starting to struggle. Guan Yu is over here. Fire Arrow is still flying, but you can see that all the gains that I made on this flank 
uh, were largely lost when a lot of my yellow turban units started to route. Her man, however, has come back from routing. He man. And he's going to try and assassinate Zhang Fei here, because Zhang Fei is looking pretty low. Uh, and as a scholar, he should be better in a 1v1 combat. And Zhang Fei, he's trying to get away, but speed is not really what he's known for. The hero of Changban. Uh, there he is, a uh, Herman with his dual wielding maces. But yeah, Herman has just been killed. Or Ki Yi, I should say, has just been killed. Swen Ran adding to her accolades in this fight, killing off the commander of the Yellow Turban forces. Zhang Fei being harassed. Uh, if you can see here, that really all that I have left are my bringers of righteousness. And they're continuing to just be surrounded and destroyed by a combination of the Wu infantry and Shu archers. Zhang Fei, however, is routing. So he man if he manages to escape the battle, maybe the Yellow Turban cause can live on yet. Um, but it's not looking good. Here we can see that, in particular, it was the Wu forces just destroying my AI ally, uh, which made it very, very difficult. I feel as though if it had just been myself and Shu, I would have had a much better time of it. Uh, but as it is, uh, we ended up losing the fight today. Uh, the Sun family certainly doing very well for themselves, even if Sun Chuan uh, did die to Huang Shao. Uh, but yeah, three brothers running away from duels, very out of character for them. Uh, you can see that, having a look at, we can't actually see the uh, kills that uh, the Wu forces got, but I'm sure that Sun Ren and Sun Jian both got a lot of kills themselves. He Yi getting a lot of kills as well, actually. Uh, right in and amongst his infantry helping to really push back the Shu Han front line, uh, but ultimately it wasn't enough. The three brothers, despite the fact they did run away from duels in this fight and engaged in uh, underhanded tactics, uh, they they were still one of the main differences between victory and defeat here. Obviously they managed to kill off Wang Shao after his victory in a duel over Sun Quan, uh, and ultimately my infantry and my AI ally was just not enough to deal with, in particular, the shock value uh, that both Shu and Wu had. So yeah, it's the first multiplayer battle for Three Kingdoms that I'm going to be showing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that because I do want to do a little bit more. I am having a lot of fun, I have to say, with Three Kingdoms. It is, it has surpassed my expectations in what I thought it was going to be, actually. Um, so yeah, hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll join me, whatever is next.